guys, welcome to another episode of Health by Valerie, but this isn't just any episode. The amount of time I have wanted to do an episode about EMF is just ridiculous, so I'm so stoked to launch this. I did it with Daniel Debon from Defender Shield. He is amazing, and if you don't know what EMF is, don't you worry. We're going to educate you on that by we, I mean he, and... He really gives some easy tips and tricks so you don't have to be overwhelmed, really breaks it down. But I feel like I know, I've done a lot of research on EMF and I learned so much from this interview because I think I was pretty overwhelmed by all of the studies from EMF and everything going into it. So I really enjoyed this interview as well. And I am so stoked because with this interview, we're actually running a giveaway. So you can find the giveaway over on my Instagram called Health by Valerie. And we're giving away a Defender Shield. So it's a laptop sleeve. So underneath your laptop and above your lap, you can put it so you it blocks any EMF radiation. But also, it's a laptop case. Um, we're giving away a copy of his book and the headphones, which they're EMF-free headphones. What more could you want, you know? You can just swap out your normal headphones. So that's great. And with that, we are going to get on with the interview. And thanks so much for inviting me on, Valerie. I really appreciate an opportunity to chat with your your audience, particularly about this subject. Uh, my background and how I got involved is interesting. I was um, I ran, ran the technical laboratories for the Bell System for years and years and years. And about uh, seven years ago, um, my sons, who are adult men, uh, had laptops on their laps. And my wife says that can't be good for you. All that energy in your laps is not good, and I want grandchildren. And so I thought to myself, that can't be true. The energy levels are so low that there's absolutely no danger to the um, the groin area of a male nor female. That's what With I thought. With the laptops? On the With laps? the laptops in their laps, right? And unbeknownst to me, what I found out was there was already a lot of research then that said after three to four hours, 25% of the male sperm is immobile. And there's potential long-term impacts if you are consistent and persistent about that exposure. So I thought about it a little bit and I said, well, I I was surprised, but then I said, well, I'll build you some shielding, which I did. And I wanted grandchildren seven years ago. Um, so I built some stuff to protect them. It turns out that that's how I got involved and I got very heavily involved because I, I realized none of us knew this was a problem. None of us had really any understanding of what exposures can do to you. Certainly the, um, market was not telling us it is a potential danger or not, but it seemed like research was saying it could be. So uh, that's how I got involved. And and by the way, that's why I wrote my book. I wrote it because people need to sort of understand that there be there, there are things that they should do in their lives uh, and be aware of the potential exposures and what it does to your body and uh, make sure you deal with those kinds of exposures and minimize those dangers to your body. Mm-hmm. And oh, by the way, Valerie, I still don't have grandchildren. <laughs> <laughs> One day. <laughs> One of these days, I hope. <laughs> yeah. Um, so if I if someone asks, like, has no idea even about any of this, and they're like, what is EMF? What, what would you say is like the simplest way to explain it? Okay. Like, um, uh, um, electromagnetic radiation in nature, there's only really one source of it, and that's the Earth. And it's a DC pulsing that comes up from the ground at about up to 12 hertz. Um, Beyond that, there really is no electromagnetic radiation in nature. So, oh, 100 years ago or so, we had electricity, we had things running, wires running in walls, then we evolved to cell phones and laptops that connected to Wi-Fi. And all of a sudden, there's electromagnetic radiation 
coming from all of our portable devices in the house from the wiring in our walls. What it is, is it's an emission, it's electrical and it's magnetic and it's being created by the uh, by the the operation of your hairdryer, your your uh, stove, your your um, toaster, uh, and when you're talking about communicating to something out outside your portable device, like a cell phone, you're talking about talking to a friend or a, a laptop talking to a Wi-Fi. They're using electromagnetic radiation to make that connection. And so 20 years ago, we never really worried about it because, well, it didn't exist. It's only over the last 10 years or so that's become so predominant in all of our lives. So for me, uh, you know, I've lived a life for a long time. Uh, most of it didn't exist. For you, maybe half your life. But for a child... It's their entire life. So all of a sudden, it's becoming more important, particularly to the moms and, and the grandmas with families. Right. And I've noticed just being a health coach and being in the wellness industry, a lot of people think because things, health issues are common that they're normal. Like a lot of things, their health issues are super common, but that they're not normal at all. So in what ways have you seen like EMF affects us in ways that we find normal, but like is you see it like affecting a lot of people. Well, there's a litany. By the way, a when electromagnetic radiation of a cell phone, when it connects to a cell tower, uses a f specific frequency. It's the speed and the like a wave that goes to the um, cell tower. That is also, by the way a microwave everyone knows what a microwave oven does when you put a piece of right. meat into a microwave oven it cooks the meat it's using a 2.3 gigahertz signal a microwave signal and your wi-fi or your cell phone generates two to five gigahertz it's the same frequency it's a thermally emitting signal much less power, but it's an emission. So to answer your question, what are the things that could be happening? Uh, Valerie, you could be getting headaches. You may be, um, your ears ring. Um, your fingers hurt when you pick up a cell phone. Um, you have burning sensations, uh, headaches. You can't sleep at night. There's so many, many things that are potentially happening to your body that are being influenced by the closeness of the radiation coming from our portable devices. Wow, that's insane. Yeah. And I can't even imagine like long-term health issues and things like that. Um, well, Valerie, that's a really sort of good point. Um, if you use a cell phone for a couple of minutes against your head, and then you stop using it, nothing will ever happen to you in your lifetime. It's when you had it for hours at a time, long durations of exposure that you're really sort of worried about. Believe it or not, it's very simple and sort of the cut to the chase. It's very simple to live in this environment, just making sure you're never close to it too long that mm -hmm. it has the exposure that can affect your body. Okay, that's an easier approach because when I first learned about EMF, I was like, oh my God, I need to move out to the mountains. Right. I live in New York City and I lived, I used to live right by the Empire State Building and there was actual conspiracy theories that the radiation, like the electromagnetic frequencies by the Empire State Building, because it has like a <laughs> tower, were so strong that like it, it, if you go near it, time doesn't exist. Like I'm screwed. <laughs> <laughs> well, well that, those things may be true. But by and large, when you are just a couple of feet away from a transmitter, you're really pretty safe. You don't have okay. to worry about it. You know, so when you go into a room um, and you have um, your laptop next to you or your cell phone next to you, by moving it a couple of feet away, you literally minimize the dangers or the potential dangers 
of those devices. It's very simple. You just need to know your environment. Mm -hmm. um, so what do you think? Like, I know a lot of, I think, I think it was Ben Greenfield, like created their whole, like a Faraday cage around it and all of this stuff. What's your opinion on people using technologies like that for EMF? Um, Faraday cages you have to be careful about because if you are if you're trying to protect from anything from the outside it will definitely do that a Faraday cage by the way is just metal that's a mesh that goes around everything ab about the house and then it's grounded so if you have a cell tower five feet away from your house. It won't go into the house. So that's sort of the idea of the Faraday cage. But if you have a lot of electronics inside your house, you don't want it because it stays within the house. So you're oftentimes slightly better off shielding the areas in which the exposures are occurring by the cell tower near your window and wall closest to that cell tower. The opposite wall, you don't worry about. So Faraday cages are, to some extent, good if you don't have a lot of electronics inside. But if you do, you're slightly smarter by actually choosing where you put those cages. Right. Awesome. OK, I could see that. Like, I've heard of terms like a subway, because it's like a metal kind of, looks right. like literally a metal can. It's literally a Faraday cage, and everyone, I always look right. around, I'm like, oh my God, everyone around me is like using their phone. Right, maybe <laughs> like that's what's happening. Blasted. It's all staying and hitting you. And that's yeah. why Faraday cages aren't necessarily the best, your yeah, best choice. Interesting. Um, yeah, but you know, when we were talking, uh, what are you sort of worried about with these kind of emissions? We talked about you know, the tingling, the headaches, the insomnia, all those kinds of things. Um, but what's actually happening when you're when those devices are close to you, they're actually, uh, they, they stress the body out. Just like any external stress, um, mm. any um, volatile organic compound, any, any environmental um, entity actually creates stress to the body. And in this case, when you are close to a cell phone, really close, it's potentially creating an oxidative stress, they call it. And that's when the uh, free radicals and the antioxidants are imbalanced, making you mm -hmm. sick, making you more exposed. So you're, you're really trying to try to minimize the closeness of those devices, because the more they're closer, the more likely they are to create a oxidative stress or a stressful environment for your oh i see yeah and for someone that's learning about emf now or is like okay what what do i do because i know a lot of people carry their phones in their pockets and like different oh, yeah. little things so what would you say are like the biggest things that we do all the time that is easy to switch up okay so you using your cell phone and you put it in your bra Oh, my God, you, never. Don't ever, ever do that. We already know through research that there's a direct correlation of the transmitters of a cell phone uh, creating cancers within the breast. Uh, a male putting a, 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 a cell phone to their pocket, front pocket, next to their groin area. Don't do that because there's constant transmissions going on. Even for a female, by the way. It affects the womb uh, and the egg within the womb by having such transmission so close to the cells. It actually can disrupt the cell to the point where it becomes um, a mutated cell or a DNA damaged cell when they're really close in its long term exposures. So you don't want to put it in your pocket. Um, and when you're using a cell phone, you don't really want to leave it very long against your head, you want to use, if you're going to have really long conversations, uh, a shielding of some sort uh, that protects the, sh the signal from going to your head, uh, or uh, earphones that have uh, EMF-free design, uh, 
And if you're talking on the phone a lot, you really want to seriously think about how to adjust it. Because we know uh, through research that some of the neurological and physiological changes that are occurring in the head are directly linked to cell phone use. So you really want to think about that, uh, how you're using current devices today, because it does influence your body. Yeah, totally. It's funny because when I first started learning about this, it's a lot of thinking like, oh, wait, what do I do? But now I think I, I automatically like sleep with my phone far from me in airplane right. mode. And right. I use um, your the EMF headphones whenever oh, I'm yeah. talking on the phone oh, or listening good. to music. Those are amazing. Um, I use like the Defender Shield when I have my laptop on my lap. And it's cool. things that once you like switch it, you don't even think about it. Right. Exactly. Here's a let's talk about sleep. Um that's one of the things that's really sort of important to know about this stuff. When you have a sanctuary, your bedroom sanctuary, you should not have any personal devices like this in the room because they're oh, transmitting. Oh, not in the room? You, you do not want it even in the room. And, and so, and the reasons why are simple. Um, we were talking a little bit about, let, let's talk about the cell and the dangers of the cell in the body first. And then I'll talk a little bit about why in the, in the room. Um, mm -hmm. We know through research and current federal uh, study work, actually, that a cell of the body can actually be damaged to the point where it becomes a, a tumor or becomes cancerous from really, really close long-term exposure to, to the power levels of a cell phone. We, we already know that. But there's 4,500 processes that occur in the body that are also impacted. And to give you an example, let's go back to the bedroom. When you're in a bedroom and you have a cell phone, even in the uh, airplane mode, you it's pinging every so often. So that potentially can touch the head where melatonin is created. It actually can actually influence the creation of, of melatonin. And in fact, it can inhibit the tele melatonin. So, so guess what? You're not going to sleep right. Well, if you don't sleep right, your circadian rhythm may be all screwed up because of these electronics influencing the brain and the biological functions of the brain. So you really want to keep this stuff uh, away from you, particularly in the section of the bedroom. Another point I'll make is, believe it or not, when you uh, look at a screen, a monitor, your iPhone, your iPad, there's a component of light that's coming out of it called blue light. It's a specific spectrum that is artificially created by the LEDs of the monitors. And believe it or not, when you're look, reading at night, that's hitting the retina, and uh, where the retina is, is uh, there's a protein, uh, a, a cy cyprochrome protein, that's the on and off switch for the melatonin. So when you're reading at night, and you're finished at 11 o'clock and you want to go to bed, you're not going to go to sleep because the melatonin didn't cycle in in the normal circadian rhythms in which you want, of course, as you know, to be healthy, you really want to make sure your circadian rhythm is remains in balance. Okay. So you really don't want to look at monitors within two hours of going to bed. But if you do, make sure you use glasses. They're just like sunglasses. But what they do is they block the blue light from the uh, monitors and prevents it from going through. So you can see the screen, but you're also going to be able to sleep when you want to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that tip. I love using blue blocking um, glasses and like these are things that once you get into the habit to, it really makes such an impact on the way you feel. That's oh, like yeah. the biggest thing I've noticed. Yeah, there was a uh, physician that I work with and he was telling me about this um, lady that was in his office that had dry eye for uh, years, five years or so. And I, and I asked him, well, what was the problem? And he said, well, I'm not sure. So we give her drops to make her eyes feel better. And I said, you know, blue light can actually 
give you uh, dry eye. We know through research, your your eyes can get dry from the blue light component that's hitting your, your eye. And I said, I tell you what, I'm, I'll send you a set of glasses. I sent him glasses. Within two hours, the dry eye she had chronically for five years went away. She what? was on this looking at a screen all day. That's what she did. And so you got to be aware that if anybody's going to protect your health, it's going to be you because no one else is going to do it. And you have to be aware of the potential concerns like the screen monitor looking at it for long term and what you may want to do to try to minimize the minimize the risks. Mm -hmm. And I find like a lot of people ignore this, but it's something that once you figure out a solution and make it a habit, it can be almost as impactful as food on your diet because these are stresses that your body's. It's like junk food. There's like junk light and junk radiation and you can eliminate that so easy and it's crazy. So here's some other things too. Uh, We were talking about uh, a cell phone near the groin of uh, male and female. Well, um, a few years ago, uh, there was a uh, clinical trial where they exposed women in the first trimester to higher and lower levels of emissions in San Francisco. And what they found, they all had little meters with them so they could actually measure throughout the day their exposures. And what they found is when there was excessive exposures in their first trimester, that they were three times more likely to have a miscarriage because of those exposures. Um, uh, When they got high enough or too much, there was miscarriage, three times more likely than the average uh, population. So you really got to think about this, potentially, um, particularly if you're um, a woman, um, of course, men as well. But with women, um, there there are stages within their body that get impacted and in, in very adverse ways over time if you're not putting a little bit of regimen in your, in your health approach to your lifestyle. Right. I have a question because I've seen this on a few different places, but I wasn't sure. There's these devices that you plug into the wall that are supposed to frequencies and be, help out with EMF, but I'm, do you know what I'm talking about? I, I do. Um, those kind of devices are removing electromagnetic radiation to some extent, but only extremely low frequency. That is the wiring in your house that is the alternating current that lights your light bulb, that runs your refrigerator. So it does uh, that job where it minimizes that exposure. But all your cell phone transmissions to the cell tower, your Wi-Fi transmission to the iPad, all of those are not touched at all. So they don't play a role in minimizing that exposure, only for extremely low frequency, not the radio frequency stuff that's used to communicate. So they're minimal. And you got to do both. You got to be aware of both. Fixing one doesn't help you solve the total problem. Okay. Cool. Like just how you can have a food diet. What's your EMF diet? Like how do you? What's what things do you personally do to get rid of EMF? Well, I got to tell you. For example, um, my at my home, I turn off my router at night. I have a timer. It's a little. $10 $10 timer. And during the day when I'm using it to communicate all the stuff I do, it's on, but at night it's completely off. In fact, at night, all my devices are off. I try to eliminate it completely. So that's one thing. Um, when I use my laptop, I, I call it a laptop, but I put it in the corner of my desk and I have an ethernet cord to it. I don't use the Wi-Fi connection. I eliminated that long ago, and um, I have um, a terminal key keyboard that I connect to it. I have it about two foot away, and my monitor I have about two foot away. So I've taken all those potential sources of emissions, and I've moved them away. I have um, a, um, 
a Roku-like product, a, a TV um, little box that you connect to your television to watch Netflix and other things. I have that on Ethernet. I hardwired it. I don't want it with Wi-Fi because I don't have to. And in fact, Val, this is a sort of an important point. This is the way you want to remember it. All your devices can be potentially dangerous. To minimize devices, think of this analogy. One bee, will kill you. One bee can't kill you, a thousand will. So what you do is look for the, all the bees in the room, and those you can eliminate, eliminate. Those you can reduce, you reduce, and you find the environment you're living in most likely the best for you by taking that action. Like cell phones, you have a self connection, you have a Bluetooth connection, and you have a Wi-Fi connection. Do you use your Bluetooth and Wi-Fi? I don't. Turn them off. They're transmitting in the room. Have only the one if you are using a cell phone in a room and move it away from you just a little bit and you're absolutely safe and you've released, removed at least two more bees that potentially could danger you, your health. Oh, wow. Yeah, because when you, like, switch down your phone, there's yeah. three little things. Yeah. And you can have the service, the Wi-Fi, or the Bluetooth. And you can – it's good if you have Wi-Fi to turn off the service. On iPhones, you can do everything with Wi-Fi. Yeah, or if right, you're exactly. using service. Yeah, just turn it off. And, okay. And, and you just minimize the exposure. And that's what you're trying to do. Yeah, it's funny. Even if you're – so even if you're not connected to a Bluetooth device or a Wi-Fi device, if those are on on your phone, it's constantly searching. Yeah. So it's really They're all transmitting, yeah. yeah. What? Yeah. Oh, my God. And, and you think you're perfectly fine. And you, most of us really are pretty fine. You know, let's not panic about this. Um, you just want to make sure that um, you're not the 3%, the 1% that will be impacted. And by the way – most everyone that's listening to you today, they won't get cancer from these kinds of things, although there is evidence in research that says that it can become cancerous with with exposures. Most of them are going to have the problem of sleeping. Most of them are going to have a problem with the headaches or, or the stress that creates the uh, burning sensations. That's the stuff you can actually fix by minimizing those exposures. And that's really the bigger deal these days is how do you find um, a way of just reducing that stuff? Because more and more, we have these electronic devices transmitting into our environment. We got to try to get it the other way. Right. Yeah, it goes to show like, for example, when you walk into a forest, there's nothing physically you can measure in your body of what's going on. Nope. But when you walk into a forest without devices, without Wi-Fi, your brain feels so much clearer. And I feel like that's it's a lot of things you can't measure or can't see, at least for me, that I see the effect on. Oh, yeah. And and by the way, um, we've not talked about this. Um, it's um, multiple chemical sensitivity. Um, you, you're probably aware is is a response of the body to uh, volatile organic compounds. Well, there's an equivalent to that with um, electromagnetic radiation. It's called uh, electro hypersensitivity. And believe it or not, more than 20% of our population gets headaches because there's a direct link from these devices. We know that for sure. Of that, which is important for all of us to know, 80% of women, uh, I don't know why, research doesn't know why, but it seems like women are more exposed and vulnerable to these kinds of things. In fact, you, you said you don't feel it. A lot of people do, women feel, actually they can feel it. And they, they go to the doctor and say, doctor, doctor, I got a headache. Oh, take two aspirin. And it's really the exposure they're feeling by the electronics in their room. So um, those kind of electro hypersensitive responses, you really got to watch because they're probably legitimate and they definitely are your body telling you that the environment's changed and, and you need to be aware of taking some action of some sort. Wow, that's such a good tip. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's really true. And I don't know why. 
we we think of it as potentially hormone differences. We know it's uh, the brain is different. We we know that um, the 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 emissions impact the brain a little bit different with women than men. We we don't know all the details, but we know that's for sure. And so like um, you get angry. That could be exposure to emissions. I I work with a doctor out in uh, Portland, and when he's near electromagnetic radiation, he actually gets angry. He has a wow. physiological change. In fact, a great story. They in, they he went to a small location, a house, uh, in a, a mountain somewhere, and they put a 5G trans a tower near him. And on a Saturday morning, he had uh, cable service the 5g service and he called me up and he said i can't stand it something going on in my environment and i can't figure it out and i said well i'm not there so how do i know what's going on but but tell me explain to me what kind of router do you have and he looked and he said well it says on the bottom i have a 5g router i said well you you have a cell tower within 750 feet of you and it's transmitting at 20 watts per kilogram, and you are feeling it. You're literally feeling the signal. And we're mostly women, but some men actually can feel the signal uh, when the environment gets uh, in excess. Wow. Yeah, it's really interesting. I'm wondering, so living in the city where there's so many cell towers and 5G, and if you turn off your Wi-Fi, all of your neighbors have their Wi-Fi yeah. on. Yeah, um, but but you're okay because they're farther away. Okay. When you're farther away, the really important thing is, and I, and I know you, you know this, Valerie, but it's important to stay healthy because, like your gut, if, if you have a leaky gut, um, your immune system is not quite what it should be. And when you have emissions like this touching your body, believe it or not, it's suppressing your immune system. So it's taxing your gut to some extent. So you want a good, solid gut. In addition to that, um, vitamins and good, healthy eating becomes, believe it or not, more important because you want to make sure you have healthy cells that are trying to deal with this new toxin in our environment. Because it's only been here 10 years, it's a new toxin in our environment. And trying to have a healthy body helps you actually deal with those kinds of things. Oh, wow. Okay, that's yeah. really great advice. Yeah. That's good to know. Yeah. Um, Ad, do you have anything else that you would like to challenge the readers, I mean listeners, <laughs> to try? Yeah. Um, I, I really, uh, the, no one is going to find protection for you in your environment, not the government. Um, there, there, there's a standard for cell phone transmissions that have been here for 30 years that was based on thermal emissions. The ra microwave we talked about before, mm -hmm. they only restrict the signals so they restrict heating up of your head. Literally. And for you, for me, it goes one inch into my head. For you, it goes in two or three inches. If you had a child that was five years old, it can go all the way through their head. So they only worried about the thermal impact. But as we're learning today, the biological impacts are much more serious than the thermal. And so you really want to make sure that you're controlling your environment because literally no one else will. Totally. I agree 100 percent. And thank you so much for doing this work. And if you guys want to know more about radiation, if this sparks your interest, I mean, you can take the tips we use and um, get the Defender Shield headphones and, you know, block your laptop from being on your lap, even if you put it on a table or I travel. So I like you guys have a Defender Shield case and I just put my laptop on top of that when I'm using it. Uh, but if you guys want to go more into the science, Radiation Nation is a really good book on that. And Dave Asprey wrote the forward. I love Dave Asprey. I saw him in London um, doing yeah. a talk at the... Did you go to the Health Optimization Summit in London? 
No, no, uh, I'll, uh, I just didn't have the time. But Dave and I have worked together for over the years about this very subject, actually. Wow. Yeah, he's big about, about EMF. Yeah, for oh, yeah. Sure. He's very passionate. Yeah. That's how I used to. I used to tell him about, you know, we talk about nature, right? I used to, I refer to it as cows don't emit electromagnetic radiation. And the reason I told him that was because he lives on a farm. <laughs> and so, <laughs> so I said, nature doesn't create this. It's when man, man created this. And uh, it's so new in our environment. We got to figure out what to do with it. And the more we learn, the better we are. Um, yeah I feel like this do you feel like this is going to be a thing that 30 years from now people would be like oh my gosh like back you know how lead or like mercury people used to have around them like in paint and everything people are going to look back and be like I can't believe people would put bluetooth airpods into their ears oh yeah right connecting back and forth right through the oh head oh my gosh Going right through the head they go and and by the way, dot one watts per kilogram, which is a third power levels to a ear uh, Bluetooth earbuds, they mutate the cell of the brain. So never ever use those things, in my opinion. Um, you're right. So when I wrote the book, um, Doctor Prasad, he's a wonderful, wonderful man, probably the most knowledgeable x-ray expert in the country if not the world and he's a learned man who's many many years um uh has been creating um helping the environment and people well he read the book and he knows about ionized radiation that's the x-ray the speed of an x-ray and I i'm writing about non-ionizing that's the microwave and he said to me well, I don't think that's true. I know a lot about this stuff. I said, okay, maybe it's not. We'll learn in time. About a year and a half later, he calls me up and he said, Dan, I had a woman who was a high-tech girl that had just gotten pregnant. And she had all these electronics around her. And she had uh, a child that had almost immediately passed away. And he said she had these very strange cancers the only thing I could point to is what you said, is that those environmental toxins had influenced that woman's uh, body, and that created the problem for her, for her child. So um, we're all learning about this, and we're learning as we're going along. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. there's collateral damage all along the way, in my opinion, and you just got to be aware of it. Totally. I feel like... This is now coming up, but I feel like there's so much research still being done. Like, we yeah. don't really know everything, all the damages. Like, like for example, when people used to paint their houses with lead, everyone thought it was totally right. safe. And now we're like, oh, my gosh, everyone was so crazy. Like, kids used to play with, like, I remember my dad telling me with, like, mercury yeah. in their well, hands and, like, yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. Well, we remember the lady who created x-rays died of radiation poisoning. What? Yeah. She oh died of radiation poisoning. Poisoning. She didn't know. Uh, we we don't know when these things come into our environment. Smoking. I used to smoke cigarettes when I was twelve years old. At that time, I thought I was a big man. That's quite a number of years ago. And um, at that time, in the in the uh, mid fifties, uh, late fifties, research knew there was direct link to cancer, but none of us knew that. All we knew is we were big men if we smoked. It took a long time for us to figure out that there was a direct link to cancer from smoking cigarettes. Wow. It just takes time. Yeah, they used to have, I saw like older ads for cigarettes and they would have like number one doctor recommended cigarette. Right. And they would have like a doctor smoking a cigarette. Well, I remember in 1979, there was um, the head of um, um, Philip Morris was talking to a group of pediatricians in the UK. And the pediatricians asked them, is there any problems with women smoking when they're pregnant? And he said, absolutely not. Then he thought about it a little bit and he said, well, it's true the child is much smaller from cigarette smoking, but what woman wouldn't want a smaller baby? 
as I said, that was the mentality at the time. There was like, we knew there was a direct relationship to smoking in small children, uh, their health. And, wow. and, and that was an acceptable response. And I think there's That's a lot of that crazy. here, too. Yeah, I also read somewhere Steve Jobs did not let any of his children yeah. use any Apple products whatsoever. A lot of many, many, many prominent people don't let their children use it uh, for the for these reasons. Um, we just don't know. And if you speculate, I ran technical laboratories for 20 some odd years for the Bell system. The last thing I thought, I used to worry about it, those technologies affecting other technologies. I never thought about how these technologies affected a person. Engineers don't think about it that way. And I think there's some of that like naivety in the designing of all these technologies around us. The human wow. part is not thought about. Wow, that's so interesting. Wild. Um, <laughs> if you guys want to find Daniel Debon and all of his stuff, he has the book Radiation Nation. Um, and where should we send the listeners to if they want to know more? Um, well, we have a, a website, which is uh, DefenderShield.com. And in, in DefenderShield.com, we do have products uh, we offer based on the, the creation of my son's product. I wanted to protect my kids, and there are so many other ways we could protect ourselves, so I have a line of products. But also, maybe even more important, we have a learning section in our website. If you want to think about what the latest research is, or you want to understand what we know about this in science, you actually can go through that whole area, and we describe all of these things for you. So you can actually understand better the potential dangers to you and your family. Um, if you prefer, go to Amazon. We have all our products sold on Amazon. But I think the best place to go is our website for all the diverse information. Awesome. And that's DefenderShield.com, correct? Thank, yes, it is. Thank you so much. <laughs> DefenderShield.com. Perfect. Thank you so much for coming on this interview. I'm so excited to put this out because I feel like it just needs, like, People need to raise more well awareness, and I think people focus so much on the food and everything, but there's this whole world of technology and things that we can optimize that can make us even healthier that we're not tapping into. So thank you so much for sharing this. Well, thanks so much for inviting me again. I really do appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs>